This is Professor Darif Seitz. This Java tutorial illustrates graphical user interface grid layout managers. This application uses a grid layout in the content container. A grid layout is rows and columns that make up cells. Here we have an 8x8, eight, eight, eight rows and 8 columns making up a checkerboard grid. When you add components to the container, the order that they're added determines the order that they appear in the cells. There's no way to put a given component in a given cell other than the order they're added to the container left to right and then the second row like so. Each grid cell can contain only a single component. If you need multiple components in a cell, you have to wrap them in a J panel component. Also, all the cells are made the same size. Down here we have a, an image of a white knight in this cell. This chessboard is oriented where this is the white side. The lower right corner needs to be white. And a knight can move in an L pattern. Two vertical and one over, or two horizontal and one up or down. At an L with a two and a one. If you click a valid move, you can move the knight. And to follow the L patterns, you can move the knight around. If you click an invalid square, the knight will not move. Let's now look at the source code for this program. Our Grid Layout Manager class extends JFrame. We declare our container called Contents. Our components will be a two-dimensional array of J buttons called squares and we allocate an 8x8 eight eight dimensioned array for them. Colors that we'll need <clears throat> the color black will keep track of the current position where the knight is where the upper left corner of the board that cell is cell 00, zero. and that's the same kind of a coordinate scheme used in drawing where the upper left corner of the board is 00, zero. so we're using the same scheme here with the grid because it works the same way our knight is going to start out in row 7. Now there's zero relative, so that's starting at the top, 0, 1 through 7. That puts you in the bottom row. And then column 1, again zero relative, is the second column, 0 and 1 over. That's where our knight starts out. The image of the knight is an image icon. We do a new image icon, giving the file name where that file is in the current folder. The constructor passes the string for the title bar to the superclass. We get the content pane into contents and we set its layout. Here it is, a new, an anonymous new grid layout 8x8. Eight eight. We create one event handler of the class button handler. We'll see that shortly below to handle our button click events when the user clicks on the different board squares. Here we create and add the board components. It's a two-dimensional array. We have a nested for loop. The outer loop using i as the loop control variable goes 0, 
less than 8 bumping by 1 and the inner loop the same increment giving us a total of 64 iterations of this innermost logic here squares IJ we instantiate a button for that array slot and then if we look at the sum of i and j modulus 2, the remainder upon division by 2, if that's not equal to 0, that is where we want our black cells to be. And we set the background color to be color black. Then we add our square to the content, contents pane and then register the button handler with the square so that the button events when they're fired from that square will be received by our event handler. Finally we go to the squares at the current row and column and set it the icon for that button to be our night icon. Set the size of the window 500 by 500 make it not resizable, resizable faults, and set location relative to null centers the window in the screen the window in the screen area. Here are some functions we'll look at after we go to the handler. The button handler is down here. It implements the action listener which requires the presence of an action performed function. In our action perform function we get the source of the event into source and then again a double loop, nested loop here of fours to go through every cell, every button in the squares array, putting it in source and then, well, it, not putting it in source, if we're checking every single square if it's equal to the source. Right here it's equal, not an assignment. If we get a match, that means that's the square that has fired the click event. So we call the function process click passing the cell coordinates i and j and then we return out of the event handler. Process click is up here. Process click says calls another function, is it a valid move for that cell? Is that some place the knight can move to? Is it valid? If it's false, it's not valid, we return, we take no action. If it is valid, then for the current position where the knight is, we set the icon there to be null, removing the icon from that cell and then the new cell where the knight is going to move we set the icon to the knight icon and update our row and column position indicators to be the i and j. This function here is a valid move checking out from the new possible landing square. Is it valid to do that? The code for it, <clears throat> we do a row delta and a column delta. We look at the difference between I, which is the row, the new row, and the current row. Look at the difference and we look at it from an absolute value point of view. We don't care about negative or positive, just how far away it is. And similarly, we look at the column distance of the new column from the old column. And if the row difference is 1 and the column difference is 2, that's one of those L's of a 2 and a 1, then we return true that it is a valid move. Or looking at it the other way, if the column delta is 1 and the row delta is 2, that's another valid L pattern and we, and we return true. Otherwise, we return false. Let's go back and look at the, the user interface again. 
So here we are again. We see this grid layout and how it can be used to simulate a chessboard or any kind of a uniform row and column pattern. We have buttons here, button images we can change. We're responding to button click events because these are buttons and validating in the event handler through some function calls whether or not it's a valid move and simulating a knight moving around on the chessboard.